White man named Bolsonaro, take advantage of your term, because my fight is for an entire lifetime. Well, Helen Tugentada is the Environmental Governance Program Coordinator at Forest People's Program. She joins us now live from London. Thanks for being with us, Helen. You know, politicians will argue that economic development really does outweigh tribal rights because it is for the greater good. Do they have a point there? Um, I'd like to just start by recognizing the damage that was caused in Japan Gorge um, and, and uh, recognizing that really was a catastrophic um, uh, event for the traditional owners of the area. Um, your question about the balance between economic uh, development and indigenous people's rights, I think is often put forward as a false choice and that there are many uh, pathways to economic development that do not directly violate the rights of indigenous peoples. And I I think that in any case where the violations are as severe as the ones that we heard about um, in the interviews before I came on, um, uh, really the, the trade-off is, is being done inappropriately. So a country like Brazil, for example, uh, whose people say their rainforests do, they'll argue differently, but they say their rainforests affect really the health of the entire world. Um, Yet burning forest land and kind of trampling on indigenous rights uh, is, is justified, according to their leaders, some of their leaders, because it's in the interest of their wider economy. So, I mean, what can be actually done to stop that? Well, I think there's a range of international laws and national laws, including in Brazil, that should be triggered to protect the rights of the peoples that, that, uh, that we're talking about, the rights of indigenous one of the things which is particularly concerning to us at the moment is that in the aftermath of the pandemic and, uh, and the sort of rush to build back, to recover from the economic damage, it is of great concern to us that we will see greater rollbacks of those national laws and more inattention to the international laws and international standards uh, that exist. Okay. Uh, going back to really the first reference, actually, you know, in the United States, when they were talking about uh, building up the oil industries in some rather controversial areas in, in North and South Dakota in particular, um, again, the government would argue this created, you know, so many jobs. It really provided opportunities for people uh, in an area that was very uh, sparsely populated, uh, to really describe it well. There's not a lot of people living in those areas anyway. Yet still, there were, there were massive protests, um, and there's still the debate today, which, I mean, why should, you know, hundreds of jobs be sacrificed for such a sparsely populated area because of what are claimed to be indigenous rights? Well, I don't, I don't think they, uh, I think these rights are, are internationally and nationally recognized, um, and uh, so they need to be protected as such. In terms of the argument for economic development in these areas, um, I, what I would say is that the kinds of jobs that we need to see in the future are the kinds of jobs that don't require the level of environmental climate change and human rights violations of the projects that, uh, that you're looking at and that, uh, that have been brought up in this, uh, in this segment. Hmm. Okay. Uh, one last question then about Brazil. You know, when you, when you try to go up against someone like the president, Jair Bolsonaro, who basically thinks you know what, the indigenous way of life is outdated. Uh, its existence shouldn't prevent, you know, the modern needs of our society. What do you tell him? How do you convince him that actually maybe we should be learning from them more in order to protect the environment for everyone? And that is the greater good. Absolutely. So what I would say to that is that there is an increasing um, body of scientific uh, uh, research and evidence that shows that indigenous peoples and their management of their territories is is an, is providing an outsized, a significant contribution to the huge crises of our time. So the climate change crises, the loss of biodiversity, the loss of natural habitat that we're seeing around the world, and they're the ecosystems that enable all of us to survive. And so the protection of indigenous peoples ability and right to manage their territories has a direct and positive impact on or the ability of all of us um, to survive. And I would, I would say that that is the line that we as an international community um, need to hold when individual governments, individual political leaders undermine those common goals that we all share. Okay, Helen Tugentat joining us there from London. Thank you so much for that.